What's happening, Forum? It's been a while. Uh, this is a blast from the past. This is your boy, Fruit Snacks. Uh, it's nice. It's a nice day. We're out in the garage. It's about... Uh, it's, a, it's a cool 78 degrees, I guess. Um, I could turn the phone around. I've probably got an app for that, but uh, let's just guess. It's... Uh, November 9th, and uh, we just celebrated game days, and I want to thank everyone else uh, that came out to game days for doing so, and everyone else, that doesn't even make, I, I almost started over again, but I'm not going to. Anyway, shout out to my boy Royce, uh, I talked to him, he came out, and he gave me the inspiration to make this video. This is uh, it's different than uh, figure update, this is different than uh, <clears throat> his own watch updates, this is knife update. Uh, Royce knows that I'm a fan of uh, collectible folding pocket knives. So I'm going to show off a few uh, from the earliest ones I ever got to um, my everyday carry. So uh, join me now. Theme song. So once again, shout out to Royce, the clean freak. Uh, I'm going to put all his info in the description below. You can check his watch videos out and whatnot. So um, this is basically everything I uh, could r round up. Most of it was in, in, a, in a desk drawer, just kind of chilling. Uh, but I'll start with my everyday carry, my favorite knife. This is a uh, aluminum uh, Benchmade. It's uh, got an aluminum body and half serration. It's an Osborne design. I think it says here 154 centimeters. Um, this is a great knife. This uh, I keep sharp. I've had it since probably 98 or 99 um, with a little variation. I always carry this on me in my pocket. Every once in a while I'll switch to one of these. But uh, most likely I'm going to have this guy. Uh, yeah, sharpen it uh, myself with a whetstone every now and then. I uh, keep it clean. I'll dismantle it completely and clean it out maybe like once every couple of years. Uh, but normally I just, I'll, I'll blow it out because it does collect a bit of pocket dust being an everyday carry. Blow it out with a little air compressor air. Uh, shoot a little, uh, I, I like uh, silicone. Uh, dry silicone lube or food, what is this? Food grade silicone lube. So like an aerosol silicone lubricant just to keep this has got a nice axis lock that's a that's a um i think a benchmade exclusive kind of thing here but it opens so nice so smoothly um there's a couple different ways that i open this knife and yeah that's uh my probably my most expensive knife as well i mean it was about two hundred dollars or something like that i think maybe two hundred and something back when i was in high school that was one hell of a purchase and i remember having uh buyer's remorse right after just because you know it's like yeah, I could get a new fucking game console for that why am I buying a pocket knife that I can't even uh, you know you're not supposed to take these to school this is you know the mind of me at 17 like this is dumb but you know it paid off it's uh been with me ever since uh throughout you know I've always kind of worked a trade industry job and I use it at least every day for work or for just opening mail or packages or uh, anything. So yeah, this is um, far and away my absolute favorite. So actually, I'm gonna put that right back in my pocket. Let's do uh, the first knife I ever got when I was probably 10 for Christmas. My parents got me a Swiss Army knife. This is your classic Swiss Army knife. I went for the toothpick and the tweezers. Uh, it's got the it's got the little mini scissors and the big blade, small blade. Um, uh, not the Phillips screwdrive tip. This is now if I was 10 this puts this thing right at around like 1990 um, And I remember my parents told me to be real careful with it and if I cut myself uh, They would have to take it away. And I cut my thumb Like maybe that weekend if Christmas was on a Friday that year. I cut my thumb that Sunday and I remember going and putting a band-aid on and walking it over to my parents and saying here you go I'm sorry I cut myself you guys have to take it away and uh, they <laughs> they did for like uh, a week and then they gave it back I think I asked for it back and I got it back but yeah this is the first pocket knife I ever got um, I still uh, keep it around in the kitchen drawer um, 
it's got a can opener on it, and I think the old style uh, kind of fruit cans, canned fruit and what canned vegetables. If you want to drain that 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 fluid, you kind of pop the one side, let it drain, and then. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know. I don't know why the fuck I use this because I do have a legit can opener, but I I, I remember distinctly keeping it in the kitchen to use for that purpose. And I have uh, several times, which doesn't make much sense. Um, this uh, this little SOG uh, knife I got on Amazon a few years ago, probably. I was impressed at how thin it was, and it's kind of meant to be put on a keychain. I travel so much that I can't really keep, you know, I, I carry my regular pocket knife, but I don't really keep any other ones around because I'll forget and take them through airport security. It's never happened, but it's just a fear I have. But this is a great, sharp, my favorite style Tonto blade. If it had a half serration, I'd be even happier. But uh, yeah, real thin, has a, uh, I guess, is that a liner lock? No, it's on the back, so I don't know what that's called. Um, anyway, that's a cool little knife that was probably on uh, some type of Amazon like deal, and I picked that up. Some of the newer knives I have seem to be uh, from Amazon. Um, this Gerber is just a little folder that I like. It's got a liner lock here and a, a little thumb stud to flick it out. This, I believe, came in a two-pack with a uh, multi-tool, you know, like a Leatherman multi-tool pair of pliers with all the accessories and stuff that come out of the handle. Um, and it was uh, really thin. I remember I kept it on the strap of a backpack. Um, and... This knife is nice. I, uh, I I like its weight. It's got a aluminum uh, body as well. Not much to say about that. I do. I like multi tools as well. I have a couple of the. Uh... All right. I was uh, talking just real quick about multi tools. Uh, I have a couple. Um, maybe I'll do a video on those. Uh, Gerber makes a nice you know pair of pliers, multi tool. Uh, I had a Leatherman Wave that was my favorite, but I lost it. Never really replaced that one, but uh, I use a Gerber one I'm happy with. A couple little miniature ones and stuff I keep in toolboxes. I think I might have a couple in here as well. Um, so yeah, uh, the fucking YouTube Capture app has like crashed on me. This is now the fourth attempt. I've re-recorded these segments. Like This is now four times. Um, luckily, I, we'll, I don't know, we'll put some cuts in here, some kind of scene transitions. Let's see what iMovie has for me. But every time I get a low battery warning, it did 20 seconds, then it did 10 seconds, and it stopped the fucking video. I'm a little upset. So, uh, let's hope that I don't accidentally cut myself. This is a buck knife that I got a little after high school from, a, a girl I was seeing. Her mom worked at the buck knives factory here in San Diego, and, uh, before they moved. It's got a nice, uh, sea bass on it, or maybe that's a freshwater bass, I don't know, he's going after a lure. Seems this was maybe a default, or a defect, I mean, there's a little scratching in there, but uh, really nice aluminum. Um, I carried this every once in a while. Uh, I like the angular hole where you could put like a key ring on it. Not really a big fan of the blade design, I guess, I don't know what that is, like, is that, is that called drop point? I like the half serration, I don't know if that's drop point, if I'm just making that up. That's all to say about this buck. That's a nice knife though, that was a gift. Um, this was also a gift. This, I don't know exactly when I received, but I was young and my grandparents went on a trip to Alaska and, uh, this was a souvenir they, they gave to me. It's engraved there. That's a cool little folder with a nice kind of, uh, stained wood, uh, handle and a, a rear lock here. Um, Anyway, let's move on to this was this is a another recent Amazon purchase. This is kind of a cheap, well, I mean definitely a cheap. I think it's a military and police Smith and Wesson licensed. Uh it's the only um assisted open uh I I guess it's that 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 like what do they call that? Liner assist or some kind of like torsion assist. There's a mechanism inside that's got tension on it. And once you open it just a little, it springs into action and goes the rest of the way. It's the only way us Californians can get something close to like a legal switchblade. Um, although I still don't know if it's uh, legal to carry this or not. I know Brian has a model of this Smith & Wesson MP that he carries most of the time. And uh, it's actually quite larger, and it's got a different blade design. I really liked how unique this blade design was. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy shit going on with it. 
and um, it's got a little lock. Uh, it's got a it's the 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 actual uh, liner lock is in there, and then it's got a finger open up there, and then a, a thumb stud. I don't know what you call that. Um, and yeah, you can slide that, lock it, so it doesn't open up in your pocket, cut your dick off. Uh, it's also got a glass breaker on here, so if you're stuck in your car or something underwater and you need to get out, you can just kind of like psh, bash that window right out and swim to shore, just like in GTA, because that's how the real world works. Uh, this is a Columbia River knife and tool. This was my everyday carry, and I got this maybe six months before I got the uh, Benchmade that I showed off. This is a really nice knife. This is most. Uh, this is my most ma uh, favorite blade design. It's the Tonto with the half serration, and I don't really carry this that often. I, I like I said, I used to preceding um, that Benchmade, but this is a really great knife. It's got a plastic body. It's lightweight. Um, yeah, favorite blade design. It feels good in your hands, and it's the first knife. It's got a liner lock, um, which I don't really like as much as the axis lock. is just so nice and so fluid on the Benchmades. But this is the first that I ever bought that had that uh, that type of opening um, tool, and with you know with a little bit of uh, wrist action, and, and you pull down on the same time, you can open that fairly easily, fairly quickly. That's a really nice knife. Um, here's a cheap shitty knife that I think I got it like. Uh, big five or something and I think this is another Smith and Wesson licensed military and no what is this Remington this is a Remington tax series Ooh, technically advanced cutlery from arms company or from a uh, Remington arms company I think Remington yeah it's made in China I think I think Remington just kind of like licensed stuff just like Smith and Wesson started doing with this guy and uh, I thought this looked kind of cool I think it came in a pack of a couple knives but it had the um, kind of like hand guard or thumb, thumb and finger guard, four finger guard there. That was kind of neat. But yeah, this is just a whatever, like, you know, I think this is like a seven or eight dollar knife. Uh, it was on clearance or on sale at, at Big Five. Um, here's some old knives I have. Uh, this is a belly song, or uh, a lot of people call this a butterfly knife. And it is was purchased in Italy. I took a trip to Europe in the year 2000 and this is uh, before 9-11 and before airport security was uh, all TSA to the gills and I um, brought these back, I brought this knife and one of these switchblades over here back from Italy in my, uh, not my carry-on but my, my checked baggage. I, I remember I hid them around in socks and uh, uh, as a as a young boy, I, I thought, man, nothing cooler than flicking around a, a, a butterfly knife. And I was never that good at it. You kind of open it like that, close it like that. But that's about all I can do. Um, I remember I had air. I, do you guys remember inflatable furniture that you would buy, like, from the shitty party store at the mall or, like, Hot Topic? I had, like, a couch and, like, a love seat. And I remember fucking flicking this thing around in my bedroom when I lived at home. And, uh... It flew out of my hands and landed right into my fucking air couch and popped it. And, uh, yeah, it was a sad day for my blue vinyl inflatable couch from Hot Topic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is illegal in California, so pro I don't think I'm supposed to have that. As well as these two. This is another one that I pulled uh, from that trip to Italy. Specifically, Italy. I don't know why. I, I, bought, the, I bought these two there. Um... There were a lot of like little kind of tchotchkes and little outlet stores I remember in the city we stayed in, and uh, a lot of them had like crazy fucking knives. And I was a knife collector back then, even in high school. And no, no, this was right after high school. Um, I, yeah, I always wanted a switchblade, man. Who doesn't want a switchblade knife? Um, this is the thing that you see in old movies and old gang members would carry around a switchblade, and it's just cool. Uh, I've always wanted to get my hands on a stiletto as well. That's the kind where you either push a button or slide a little thing up and down and it pops out the top. Now, they make really small California legal stilettos, and you can find those on Amazon and probably order them. But, um, yeah, I would, I've always wanted a full-size stiletto. It's interesting because uh, 
there's a lot of legality issues, especially with uh, weapons, firearms, and knives and stuff in California. And I was so stupid at one point as a teenager. I uh, well, not a teenager, in my twenties, I guess. I used to carry uh, one of these switchblades as my everyday carry for a couple months, and then I was like, "What am I doing? I'm gonna get pulled over in like a random traffic stop and 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 go to jail because I have a, an illegal pocket knife on me." Like, yeah, uh, that's a bad idea. Don't do that, guys. Um, yeah, this one is pretty cheap and chintzy. I think it's like, uh, it looks like um, kind of stamped parts for the bottom here. A lot of pins. I think the safety is totally broken off of this thing, and it's permanently affixed. I think I fixed it into the open position. This one's in a little better shape. Uh, same thing, same probably, uh, probably manufactured in a different location, but the same parts and were stamped from the same similar dies. This is kind of the universal switchblade that you can get. And I think these are both stainless free, rust free. I think this is probably made in Italy as well. Um, but yeah, not much to say. I don't know where I got this. I think a buddy of mine that I worked with gave it to me. The lock still works on this one. And this is the one that I used to carry around. But every once in a while, this thing would open in my pocket, and then, you know, you'd feel it go off when you'd lean against something, and it, it wouldn't open all the way, but it'd open about halfway, and you go, uh-oh. you kind of reach in and click it back closed. Um, yeah. Switchblades, uh, they're fun. This is, this is a really great, big, this is one of my uh, larger folders. Uh, this is a Columbia River Knife and Tool. Um, this is a gift for Christmas that, uh, Janet's dad got me. Shout out to, uh, Mr. Pariso. This was a really nice, looks like a Casper design. Um, I don't know how big this one is. It doesn't really say, but, uh, this is a little too big to practically carry, but the grip on it, I mean, this would be like great to take if you were hunting or, uh, camping, something like that. But the, the grip on it, I really like the, uh, the, the, the thumb has, uh, a nice place to, uh, you know, lock, uh, the lock slides up and it affixes the blade in either the open or closed position, but it feels really good there. And your, your index finger has its own little groove and it really just fits your hand. Nice. Um, I don't really do much with this. I, I keep this in a toolbox in my truck and, um, yeah, I don't think I've ever even opened anything with the blade. So it's like really nice condition. Um, then let's go to, this is an old fixed blade. I don't have many fixed blade knives, but this is one that I just keep, uh, in my bedroom and I've always liked this knife. It's, it's fairly shitty. It's fairly cheap. It's got a, a, a sheath. That's very tactical. Um, but this is, I thought was pretty cool for, for like a Chinese, like just stamped stainless steel kind of knife. It's super sharp, super fucking pointy. I mean, it's almost like a little katana in the, uh, the blade design. And it's, it's got that Japanese kind of styling with the, with the, um, with the blade style and I think the little ta you know the uh, tactical what, what do you call this paracord at the end and it's got it, it's all full tang it's one piece um, but it's got this nice rubber grip that really feels good so uh, this is when I hear a bump in the night what I go to grab and uh, yeah this is this is this is a nice cheap knife I can't even recall where I've gotten it and I've had it for for a long time this is something that I probably bought like at a gun show or uh, some kind of, you know, fair or something where they had a bunch of shit at a booth. Uh, and then this is another uh, gift. This was also, I received this knife too with uh, the CRKT that I showed earlier. This was um, given to me at the same time. This is kind of a cool, another kind of shitty, cheap, whatever. But uh, it's got a really big uh, sheath with like a lot of paracord, and I think this is like a big five kind of special type deal. It's got a little compartment here where you can actually put. Um, it's meant to hold uh, 223 ammunition, so uh, I think maybe this is meant for some type of Marine Corps guy who uh, who has an M4 at his side as well. But uh, you can strap it to your leg. You could strap it to your belt. It's all got all kind of tactical release stuff. But it is pretty shitty. It's, this ain't no chem, this ain't no K bar. We got, we got, what do we got? M tech. It, it says USA on it, but for sure this thing was made in China. Let's see here. Um, 
uh, steel, USA design, handcrafted in China. All right. You can see it is not full tang. It goes in, and then we have like a uh, spring pen to hold the uh, the handle on. But it's got this cool, like, saw on the back. I remember when I was a kid, I had a big, you remember, like, the big Rambo, the, the typical, like, Rambo-looking knife? I had a big rubber one. And uh, when I used to play with my friends outside after school, you know, we had all our sh cap guns and, like, rubber knives and shit. And uh, I remember it had, like, badass, like, saw tooth design on the back. And, yeah, this is, this is a nice knife. Um... For what it is, this is probably like, you know, some kind of on sale clearance pack that came with in a big pack of knives. This is shit you would see like for sale on QVC late night. Um, but it's super fucking heavy duty and it is super sharp. And I bet you could fuck someone up with it if you didn't know what you were doing. There's something in the handle too. It's probably, this is considered, what do you call like a, a oh man, like a camping knife or, a, yeah, it's got the compass, it probably matches, I don't know, a sewing kit, uh, band-aids, uh, survival knife, survival knife, that's a word I'm looking for. Um, <clears throat> alright guys, well that's, uh, about all of, uh, oh, Eric's, Eric's real happy, oh, he's got kitchen knives in his mouth, uh, Tune in next time. Shout out to Royce. Uh, maybe we'll do a sword review. Hey, maybe I'll uh, show you all the fucking razor blades I keep in the toolbox. Until next time, uh, we sure do love you, and we'll see you then. Rock and roll.